And we're back! Episode 61. 61. I haven't actually done an audio check uh, because I've just been um, a little bit... Um, Getting beers. A, a, yeah, we were on the beers, man. We're on the beers at the moment. Um, we're, on, we're on a lot of things that aren't, uh, aren't actually um, uh, wine related. Well, well, we will get some wine in there in a second. But how's the audio? Let us know. Um, back on episode 61, uh, day 62 for me. And of course, every now and then we like to throw across uh, something that's, that's a little bit different. A little bit, little bit out there. Um, that's that's not wine related. Sometimes it's chocolate. Sometimes a lot of times it is beer um, We do say it takes you know a lot of beer to make really great wine, but we know From experience it takes way more to make really good gin and That was actually the topic of today. I've got with us today Sean Baxter. Thanks for joining us mate. Thanks for having me from probably one of the most exciting If not at least for me one of the most exciting gin brands that has managed to do what you know We love to do actually with wine is to make it fun to make it really engaging to make it really inclusive And of course, that's what you've done with never never distilling co you and George and Tim yeah. as well um, Thank you so much for joining us mate. Well, an absolute pleasure. Brent. Thank you for, for having me and thank you for the forex goals fellow Well, you actually brought us oh, forex oh, goals. It's, so it's, it's, you know, it's a Queensland way. It's, it? it's just what we do <laughs> Right, first and foremost, would you like a glass of wine? Um, I mean, I'll have one in the background, yeah, absolutely. We can, yeah, yeah, we can triple park, it's all right. I need some wine. Let's, let's, let's go and have some of this. Uh, what do you usually like to drink? I tend to drink uh, quite a lot of Chardonnay. I like a little bit Whoa. of oak. Um, oh, of, do we have the Chardonnay for you? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, I'm a big fan. <laughs> this is uh, uh, BK Wines. BK is based uh, in uh, just down Basket Range, uh, not too far away. Bloody hell, BK! You're using some pretty crazy hefty wax. Um, and this is one of his, I guess you know, I'm gonna say his, one of his pinnacle wines that he absolutely does. This is this is pretty uh, pretty yummy stuff. Um, but wait, while I'm cracking this open. What got you into, firstly, why are you in Adelaide? Oh, a, what, what, what happened yes. with that? Because you're a Queenslander, right? I know, that's a, that's a great question. I, uh, I, fe I fell in love, I fell in love in, in Melbourne. Happens. Yeah, I, I, was, Happens. I was living in Melbourne as a bartender. I had just started working as a brand ambassador for um, the Reserve Spirit Portfolio from Diageo's um, uh, range. And I met my uh, South Australian wife. That was a, one of the first things she said, actually. Was, uh, was I'm a South Australian? No, she said I'm from Adelaide. <laughs> oh, i your wife. She said, no, she said, she said, I'm, she said I'm from Adelaide. And I was like, that's cool, I'm from Brisbane. We can both get it out of the way. Um, and she, she uh, yeah, it was, it was a really important part, I guess, of, uh, of, of the, our first courting was to, um, uh, if we were gonna be serious, that Adelaide was on the card. So for the next kind of three years, I was always thinking, what sort of bar am I going to open up in Adelaide? That was genuinely the, seriously. Yeah, that was the very first sort of thoughts that I was going to do. Then I did MasterChef, and I said, like, "What sort of restaurant are you going to open in, in in Adelaide?" And then I got 16th, and I was like, "That doesn't necessarily equate to a restaurant uh, level of." Would you just glossed over something for everyone at home? <laughs> he did MasterChef. Just, just, yeah. I mean, was it something fun to do? It was incredible. It was that so many. No, as in, like, as in, was it something like you just wake up one day and like, yeah, I'm gonna just apply. Yeah, the hardest thing was like the whole like food dream. You know, you have to have a food dream. I didn't really have a food. I just really wanted to win 250k cooking. So <laughs> that, that wasn't that wasn't a responsible. That wasn't a, a good response. It used to annoy George quite quite a lot. Um, so yeah, it was it was amazing. It was it's great to be in a bubble. I mean, we're all living yeah. in bubbles at the moment, and I guess it's sort of, yeah, you, yeah. you discover a lot about yourself when you when you, you don't have access to all the things that you normally would and when you're in a house with no access to the outside world, no phone, no mm -hmm. news, you know, it's, it's yep. kind of a cool thing to go through. So at the moment, is that something you've, you guys have been going through a little bit? No, uh, not really. It's sort of, I, I, in, I, I've got to be careful how many times I say the word because I know that I'm- Oh, bad. he knows, he's I done know, some background it's, research. It's yeah, all right, it's all right. Like, I can- What I mean, do you like the beer? I, I can so. put my, <laughs> my liver on the line, it's all right. But it's, de it's definitely, uh, it was, it was great to sort of have that experience at the very start, but then we quickly realized that, um, and I'm sure you had the same, that mm. you still have to be pretty busy in order to, to, to get past or get by at all. Uh, yeah, and yeah, we've, been, yeah. we've been busier than ever really, um, trying to pivot and reposition and, 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 and really refocus. We're a brand that was very much focused on bars and restaurants. Yep. Um, 
never expecting there to be. <laughs> 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 like, I mean, you didn't have a contingency for yeah, this? I mean, I it's like, what does that happen? I still remember the conversation with you and George and start going, let's focus on bars first and use bartenders as a way of being our own ambassadors and, and, yeah. and helping spread the word. And, and that's how you grow like a really great spirit. Yeah, and, really and, and we'll focus on the off-premise when we have to. And <laughs> <laughs> so it's been, it's been, look, it's been a really uh, rewarding thing as a brand to actually have to do is to, yep. is to suddenly look and, and audit yourself and, yep. and have a little bit of a, a step back and go, where can we be better? And it's been, uh, it's been, it's been very helpful. But in answer to your, 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 the original question, uh, Matt Cassidy in Melbourne, and then we moved to Sydney, uh, and then eventually in 2000 and uh, end of 2016, so 2017, we, uh, we moved down to Adelaide. So in between, obviously moving to all those different places, getting to Adelaide, mm. uh, and then of course having this this utterly amazing gin brand. Mm. Where did George and Tim come to it? Interesting. So I because were they just here? So Tim. What did they uh, move as well? No, Tim and George. George was actually based. Uh, George is from South Australia, same as Tim. Yep. Um, George was based in Sydney for work as well. So we were when we first met, we would yep. we would start catching up there. But I knew Tim through my wife. So Cass, Cassie and yeah. Tim's wife, Amy, yeah. best mates. All yeah, the way right. through school, went to Loretto. You oh, know yeah, that? yeah, yeah, Loretto College, yeah, absolutely. Apparently that's yeah, an Adelaide yeah, thing. You've, got to, thing. Yeah. you've got to say which, 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 where which, did you go to school? Well, that's a Queensland yeah. thing as well. I think it's just... No, no it's, it's like, really? so I, I, it's like, there's this thing, it's so Adelaide. Adelaide. Where, where you... So Adelaide, I'm like, what is so Adelaide? Like the fact that you ask where you went to school, the second question. <laughs> Typically, <laughs> yes, it's like, like, it's, it's like it's size like, you up and stuff like that. <laughs> so, yeah, you're a Loretta girl. Yeah, so they, 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 they've um, been lifelong friends, bridesmaids at each other's weddings. And um, it was uh, um, uh, amazing to sort of suddenly see Tim transition from his business and go, well, I've been thinking about maybe stepping away from my career and, and starting a distillery. Do you want to get involved? Why well, not he just like literally came out and was just like, this one I want to do? Yeah, it was, it was, it was around it was a bit of that. coaxing, there was a bit was of drinking sort of, and coaxing. It first started off like, do you want to come and see my backyard setup, which I thought was a euphemism and I was <laughs> relatively, re relatively reluctant to begin with. But then he showed me his, uh, his setup in his, in his garage and he had a small steel operation, all, 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 um, Totally not legit. Uh, a brewery, uh, like just pr producing like for a his own. Yeah, he's just it's tinkering away, yeah, and he's yeah, we, yeah. like, we, we, his first nickname was the fermentalist because he was just. Like, he's still making vinegar. If you go into his shed right now, he's got fourteen different types of vinegar on the go. So like, it's like every winemaker's worst yeah, nightmare. It is. It's, it's, just, basically, it's, like, <laughs> it's like every type of newborn yeast growing. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, just, it's so good. So like he was. Passionate. He's actually got um, a Gilby lineage. He's from um, his his ancestry goes back to the Gilbys, and there was always this itch that he the wanted Gilbys, to scratch. The Gilbys, as in Gilbys, Gilbys. Gilbys Gin. Yeah. So yeah, wow. It's his great great grandmother. Um, so like again, when my old man buys it, he lives in Thailand. Yeah, you can still get it. Like yeah, you can. He got. He I mean, got he loves a, it. He got a small, like not a huge amount of money, but when 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 someone passed away, you think his grandmother passed away, he got like a very very small inheritance from 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 that, which is. Uh, what I'm saying, small. I'm saying it's it's small, but it was from the Gilbys. Yeah, is, yeah, that's uh, what matters. That's what matters. So Absolutely. I, I think that that's a, a big part of it. And George and Tim went to university together. Uh, again, so Adelaide. Uh, Tim introduced me and George at Whiskey Live in 2016 and said, "You got to get to know this guy." It was really recent. Man. Yeah, yeah. And that was like well, four years ago, even yeah, less, a little bit three yeah. and a bit years so ago. So we, we produced our first bottle of gin uh, in August of 2017. Wow. So we, 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 we named the brand and we, we trademarked it in December 2016, which is what we put on the bottle. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we did pretty much nine months of R&D before we got to uh, sell our yeah. first bottle. So made like a lot of shit gin before you started making like... Yeah, like, well the very first gin we, we made <laughs> was for my wedding. So I, got, so I was kind of this big circle. Um, I got married up in Eurabla and um, no. Tim and George gave me 25 litres of gin. Uh, which we gave, <laughs> which we gave out as wedding favors. So yeah, we gave totally, it, we yeah. gave them out at, at the end. But we didn't have any bottles put in, so we put them in empty uh, fever tree bottles with a crown cap. And so it's 200 mils. We <laughs> can see mils. this going real. So then we had to, we had to put, take buses up. And I had like so many bartenders and friends of mine from around the country. All they all thought it was gin and tonic. So they all get on, they all get on Desi's bus service at like 11 o'clock and crack these bottles. And just immediately neck 200 mils of 43% alcohol <laughs> after <laughs> after already Fun after already <laughs> drinking like an aggressive amount of whiskey and wine at uh, at the reception. So it was. 
I still remember my wife pulled me aside like halfway through the night going, is this your brand launch or our wedding? Because <laughs> Tim and George were walking, uh, around with, <laughs> walking around with nose in glasses going, what do you reckon? What do you really think? <laughs> so, so yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been quick, but it's been it's been really fun to be on that ride. Do you ever sort of pinch yourself like at the moment? Can I go? Wow, we didn't we didn't because obviously coming from like a whiskey background, was the intent always for gin or was like whiskey? There was, was whiskey like a big focus. There as was well? definitely a whiskey. Very there was definitely well my passion. I still love whiskey. I still love the and Tim loves making beer. You know, and mm. they they work really well together. Um, very early on, like my background was bartending, and even when I was working as a whiskey ambassador, I was always buying the gronies and asking them to put it through as Johnny Walker. You know, like it was still, it's. I guess it's just like every other ambassador. You know, you can you can only drink so much of it. Um, the amount the amount of ochre that's been drunk as Campari. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, Tristan, watching you. <laughs> exactly right. You know, so I, I've always been a massive massive gin fan, but I've loved the big, earthy, classic dark styles that I was sort of, I guess, brought up on and trained on mm. when I was a young bartender. And, and um, for want of a better word, in Australia, there was, you know, people that were crushing it in, in so many different parts of, of gin production. But for us, I just wanted to, to make a London dry style. Uh, and, and Tim and George, Tim with his background and his family heritage, and George just likes to drink. I've never met anyone who can put it away like George can. Um, you know, love that style and love that, yeah, yeah. love that classic sort of flavour. So that was always the kind of on the whiteboard. You know, that was juniper underlined a couple of times and how we built yeah. that up. Yeah, it was interesting to see sort of like how you treat juniper in. Obviously, you're very much like juniper focused. Like that is yeah. like the, the, the predominant focus with everything that you do. Um, and actually, and it's not just gin. Like no. Juniper is like the focus for other things as well. It's bonkers. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome to see different interpretations because it's sort of like what we go through as winemakers, we're seeing, you know, we focus on one thing. We'll, you know, we'll narrow focus on, on Pinot Noir, for example, and we'll see Pinot Noir from different sites and stuff like that. You actually do vintage fucking Juniper. It, uh, that, yeah, that was a really fun thing to, to explore because that, that came about because we were so small. You know, yeah. like every small brand effectively is using from the first time they start yeah. that season's Juniper. You know, like, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's 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 effectively being harvested that year, and unless you're getting from a from a uh, from a uh, uh, like a distributor who's yeah. potentially using old stock or stuff they're sitting on, usually you get this sort of bright, fresh flavour. And we always wanted to champion that. We always wanted that to be at the at the forefront. And when we discovered our juniper freak, mm. that was when we realised that we could have a lot of fun with it. Actually, putting that yeah. putting that vintage flavour at the very forefront of, yeah. of how we talk about that gin, and it's incredible. Like we came across this year was the first real deviation in style because it was a slightly off season uh, which is what um, uh, our distributor thinks juniper apparently goes in cycles of five because of how it ripens on the tree yeah, yeah, so again yeah. sometimes it can be overpicked which means that you've got younger you know, yeah. less ripe berries on the, on, the, on, the, on the bush and that creates different flavors and that was the very first time that we were kind of like wow there's so much more eucalypt in this and kind of was like step back and like this is cool this is really this is what we wanted we wanted yeah. it to be different we wanted so it to have you looked at anything like single origin junipers and stuff like that like coffee wood yeah we've played around with it's definitely on the on the i probably shouldn't say too much because so it's the definitely idea on that the, like because yeah. you can go with so many different directions um you know you could you could i mean australian juniper is that a thing it, i know there's the native juniper which isn't which is like i'm talking like legitimate like you know, the, is there is there the, such thing as the biggest problem that I've that I can understand with Australian juniper is even though that we are in the perfect place to grow it and you mm. know, it needs that Mediterranean esque kind of and dry, soil like and it's, it's actually like and they and they're really old trees, incredibly juniper. sturdy. It yeah. takes a long time to get there, so it's sort of yeah, yeah. it takes about twelve years until the berries get on the tree, and then it takes another three years for them to fully ripen to harvest. So it's like a whiskey. It's like you plant a, a grove, you're waiting for a long time. Yeah. And then there's no particular guarantee it's like agave. That you, yeah that you're gonna get it's yeah. 100 like agave so yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the, the thing about agave however is that you plant an agave plant you know you're gonna harvest that in 12 years like when you plant juniper you have it's, no you know, it start male and it female begins. oh yeah you might not even get any fruit so you, like, like, you're, yeah, yeah, it's so it's, it, it can be it can be really challenging so um and then the biggest part of the problem is the labor cost of harvesting it so when it comes to europe there's no, a ready-made right. um <laughs> centuries old tradition of you know, travellers, of yeah. farmers, of, of, of many, many different people but, picking. I mean, but picking, like, like Australian labour costs are just so low. Yes, it's, it's it. Especially when you get them on Sundays. It'd be good to get a backpack, just a backpacker in Santa. Go and pick the juniper trees one by one, because that's pretty much 
That's pretty much how that's they pretty have much to, it done. Yeah, because and they, and they're actually like, quite gnarly looking. Yeah. It's not like a, a grapevine or anything like nah, that. No, they'll get you. It's uh, it's a yeah, yeah, sharp, right. gnarly tree. Like I really want to create the experience where we get people to come and join us and pick some juniper off our trees that we planted, <laughs> and then just to experience the ah 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 ah. <laughs> this is not fun, actually. This is this is. Uh, so so, what drew you to McLaren Vale? then like because obviously you've set up yeah. you've done this amazing setup in McLaren Vale and of course opened pretty much right before COVID yeah like the, the really cool thing about McLaren Vale was that it was always on our label so even though we were in Royal Park we got a local artist Carrier Wright to yeah. do up the, the so this the is lineup. I, I'll, I'll show you guys here you got to check it out so the um, it's pretty amazing um cheeky so that that was uh mclaren vale so we were in royal park which for those of you who aren't in south australia it does it sounds very leafy royal park not not so much very very industrial um and we were out at the, at the back of big shed brewing um so we always had our eye on mclarenville we really liked the uh the combination of of closeness to the city but also just the incredible sort of uh, variety of different uh uh you know, options that you've got down there. You've got, you've got the coastline pretty much on your doorstep, mm. and you've got the vines. Mm. Um, you know, it's just such an, an energetic and really fun sort of part of the world. And when I was first looking for a place you know, to live or, or where my dream sort of spot Is it one of those, like, you take the boy out of Queensland kind of moments? I love the beach, you know? Yeah, yeah, I don't love yeah. going to the water. I love drinking by the beach. It's a yeah, big it makes, like, yeah, yeah, total sense. Yeah, it's, it's very sharky down here as well. So I, it's I, a bit sharky. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't want to... <laughs> Yeah, but I like down that part of the world. I think is is, is spectacular. And well, in particular, I actually find this is my biggest bugbear about South Australia, and you'll know this growing up in Queensland. Yeah. You don't need to know how to fish to fish in Queensland. You just chuck it in, yeah, you are, and yeah. you just get something. You know, often here. you'll catch something that's catching the other fish as well. Yeah, quite often like... as well. So you just leave it in. You know, always <laughs> that, you know, the, the whole sort of phrase "there's always a bigger fish" was coined in Queensland. Um, but yeah, here you actually need to know how to fish, where to go, what to, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing to see like, but when you do know down here, it's pretty incredible. Um, but jumping straight to the comments, uh, Justin Carey, Scotty, uh, Supersonic Turtle 02, uh, Christina, of course, it is June day today. Terry, Terry, have you met Terry? Have you heard of Terry? I reckon I've probably met a couple of Terry, times. Terry, I think uh, I think Terry's definitely met uh, Never Never Gin a couple of times. Uh, I'm going to say Terry is is it's actually Terry's show. It's actually got nothing to do with me. Uh, <laughs> Terry's like the dungeon master. He's sort of like watching over all of us. Uh, Justin, uh, who uh, Justin, I'm going to have to say the last couple of nights, Kerry's actually been the first one in the comments. But you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know because Kerry has managed to find a glitch, a hack. Um, Hack the mainframe. She's hacking the mainframe at the moment. <laughs> I was, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a photo just for you, Justin, of, of of what she's managed to do, and I will share with you the hack. So if you felt so inclined, you could also out hack the hacker. That's <laughs> um, absolutely fine. Uh, Mitch Horrocks, g'day, Sean. Hey, Mitchy. Um, uh, Mitch is behind an amazing, amazing channel. Ah, what six, a six, three to zero. Yeah. yeah, we 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 do a lot of um, a lot of work with um, with those guys because. Of course, you know, bringing water to people that actually need it in uh, Uganda. Um, you know, that was a great party. The, the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, down, down at Haynes and Co. Yeah. And we, when we raised a lot of money for for, uh, for Mitch, that was a good time. And we like it because, of course, with Unico, we're trying to not irrigate vines, so we can actually use water where it's actually needed. Um, Good Eddie. Thanks, mate. Uh, really like the Never Never Navy Strength uh, with strawberry basil and black pepper cordial I made, and a touch of soda water. <laughs> Boom. That sounds Boom. delicious. Justin is here also introducing a new word for the drinking game, pivot. I think that is... Pivot? I think pivot That's should my, be a part I think it should be, actually. I think that definitely I should be a part daily. of daily. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a little bit too much. Yeah. I think we're going to come up with a new word for pivot. Um, someone told me changing lanes was a better better way to describe it. Wing attack. Wing, a wing attack. It's my favourite position <laughs> in Apple. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> How much fun is that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you ask which school uh, so that you can establish that one degree of separation. That's not that's actually a really good good descriptor. Uh, thanks, Deb, for, for providing that. Thanks, Deb. Um, make sure to mention the rocking horse, Sean. Something about the rocking horse? I don't know what that is. We have, the, we have the largest rocking horse in town. Oh, you do too! Yes! Yeah. I forgot, I completely we, we forgot. We put the rock in the... rocking horse, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's apparently what it's for. Um, Alright, so you've brought, you've brought an amazing wine, apparently. To try, to try to stump me up on blind tasting. Have I really? Uh, apparently. Oh, excellent. Apparently. <laughs> apparently. Excellent. And of course, it is the. Uh, we're going to jump straight to uh, the only sport left on Australian television. Of course, it is blind tasting. Yes. Now you're not much of a wine guy. I mean, you're I a wine guy. No, you're I a don't. Wine guy. I, I drink wine. I love wine. Um, but 
I've been watching on in fascination with the blind tastings because outside of uh, you know there's a few sh like SOM on, on Netflix yeah. and a few oh, yeah, other yeah, really yeah. cool shows I'm always intrigued by it because for me it's one of the the greatest skills for someone to be able to pick up a glass and immediately see almost like it's handwriting um, see what it is and where it's from and and who's the producer so I love it I think it's a I've done it with whiskey, I've done it with beer, I've done very, very little of it with wine. We brought a fun one. It, it's, Definitely it's, brought a fun one. It's, uh, I like this. Um, and I'll put the comments down, Noah's going to put into the comments exactly what this wine is, so I don't know, but you guys will know, and you'll see how close or far away I am uh, in, in fucking it up or winning it. Um, no, it, it's actually really interesting, and that's probably one of the reasons why we really, really love wine, uh, first and foremost. Um, is that it can legitimately be that unique that we can actually pick out and it can be anywhere in the world if it's made really well like if it's made made right even if it's not made right we're just kind of cluey enough to be able to go I know kind of I know exactly how it's been made so it could probably only come from this area yeah um, like straight away I'm getting awesome sort of GSM or Grenache vibes like just straight off the nose yeah. and so it's, it's, it's so accurate there's over 4,000 different grape varieties that we could potentially make wine from and it is quite legitimately like that. You can actually pick them up based on smell alone. See, it's pretty cool. When I think of a lot of wine, I think of that very famous Danny Boy quote, which is, smells like crushed grapes. And like, I, I, it's not as simple as that, but I, obviously there's, when I smell whiskey, the first thing I smell is oak. And then I have to get into the, the nuances of it. Then I have to get into the breaking it down. The same with a lot of gins. I'll, I'll f hopefully first smell kind of juniper, hopefully. Yeah. But, um, when it comes to wine, it's it's just I find it really uh, a challenge, um, but it's it's still a, an exciting pastime. I'm happy to entertain the thought of getting better at it, to be honest. So, <laughs> well, it's good. I... It's, it's a bit of a break. So sometimes uh, every now and then, when we get sort of so caught up with the world of wine, and, and there is you know, as I think in in all industries, there's egos and there's different things. Sometimes we're like, you know what, I'm just going to sell some gin for a while. Mm. It's great because I then you get to go and deal with bartenders who are, I assure you. A completely different breed from sommeliers. They they could come from completely different planets. It's like the the Mars Venus kind of deal. Yeah. yeah this is like like Pluto and the Moon. Like seriously, it's like they're completely different people. There's uh, there, there is there's definitely you're 100 right. There's crossover. There is though. crossover. There's yeah, a, there's yeah. a few bartenders I think that I've met in my in my uh, in my travels. What's well, changing a lot? Probably take themselves a, a bit too seriously. But there's an amazing yeah. there's an amazing collection of bartenders that are that are in it. For the hospitality, and it's it's immediate. Mm. It's immediately obvious when you meet them, and yeah, yeah, yeah. when you have the pleasure of meeting them, and you have the pleasure of sitting across from yeah. them. It's an, it's it's probably the thing I miss the most about this time, which is yeah. sitting oh, in front going, of yeah, going out with them and actually just, just having a bit. Someone of a who yard makes your night better immediately. That's actually it's really so you've completely read between the lines perfectly. When you know because there's plenty of bartenders I've gone out, and it's kind of been quite abrupt for me when I'm like, oh wow, this is this whole venue, this whole experience for a customer is actually more about the bartender mm. than it is actually about the customer. And I find that because Soms are really like, oh, that oh, noise. That sounds so <laughs> refreshing. <laughs> Straight in. Yep. Mm. Uh, it's like a twitch at the back of your head. You yeah. Ah. Like, oh. Everyone. Oh. But I mean, like that's that's actually well, we have actually noticed a, a large difference, and sort of when we first sort of started uh, Applewood, uh, we had sort of discovered how far out of our depth we actually were mm. in dealing with bartenders because we'd come from wine. Mm. Um, and then we were like, actually, like this is actually a really great avenue for us to sell a bunch of wine because no no winery was even remotely interested in selling wine to cocktail bartenders. Why? Because they don't sell wine. I'm like, yeah, but they could, they really kind of should it. And we looked at, they had great craft beer. Typically people that are into like whiskey and great gin and cocktails have a great craft beer selection. Yeah. They have a, everyone universally has just the world's shittiest wine <laughs> lineup. They're like, how, how are you still, how are you, it's just so incongruent. So that's when sort of we were like, hey, let's be the wine for bartenders yeah. and, we, and be okay with that and, um, and have a lot of fun with it. And you know, if they wanted to support Apple, they could. And so it wasn't really so part of our agenda. Our agenda's literally always been about just trying to make wine more democratised and fun for, for younger people because it should be. Should well, be. One of the very know. first times I tried Unico Cello was at um, Hubert in Sydney. Yeah, downstairs. sick. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, don't, Luke Reddington poured a glass of it for my wife. Um, she said, I know you don't drink Savion Blanc, but you'll love a Savion Blanc. And it was oh, uh, harvest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was. And it was delicious. It was, yeah. And it was, and like, again, it's, it's great to have those little moments where it's, uh, yeah, you get introduced to, to beautiful wines um, through mm. through those venues. And I mm. think some of those, some of the best experiences I've had 
um, have always been uh, sitting across from, from someone I truly respect in this industry and most of the time they're bartenders. If I'm lucky enough to get a som, then yep. I'm, um, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm always, <laughs> yeah. I don't eat in places often that have one, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's usually, it's, it's usually um, uh, very learned and bartenders. And Grill Burgers doesn't have one? <laughs> Please, you'll change this! <laughs> All right, so uh, you're probably unfamiliar with the game of options, but right. essentially what it is is, and I, I, Noah, did you want to play? Are you going to play options for us? Would you mind asking oh, yeah, questions? I'll, I'll look up so, but essentially, it's um, you know we navigate uh, from like a really broad aspect right down to a really sort of tight aspect. So, right. um, obviously, we're operating in a in a, a black glass situation. Um, so, so is this is this one that I know? Is this one I brought, or is it complete? This is right. Yeah. So I'm not really playing. I'm not kind of trying to. Get... Yeah, no. <laughs> no, we will. We will next. But next, yeah, we're right. gonna do it. But we can okay. be on the same team. It's okay. If you okay, cool. we'll Excellent. be on the same team. It's fine. Cool. Um, and and trust me, sometimes it's better not to be on my team because I can like <laughs> completely fuck it up. My strike rate, I think, is around about thirty to forty percent. So it's not that great. Um, but. Obviously, the first question is like red or white, and then we move down to like old world, new world. Old world being, of course, like France, Spain, Italy. New world being uh, New Zealand, America, Australia, and then sort of narrow and narrow and narrow until such time as like we're like, what, what the fuck? What is you the, got? Yeah, exactly. What, what producer is it? Um, so Noah, would you mind starting us off, please? Uh, red or white? I think it's red. It's red. Old world, new world. It's new world. It's new world. Um, South Africa, Australia. Australia. It's Australia. Western Australian, South Australian, Tasmania. Be hard pressed for it to be from Tasmania because it's so dense, so ripe, so rich. Uh, it could well be from from mm. Margaret River, but the acidity's a little bit. I'm gonna say not clunky, but it's just not as sort of lean and pristine as it was would be from Marg. So I'd say it's South Australia. It is South Australia. Cool. Are we going? At Barossa Valley, Claire Valley, Valley. Yeah, that's what I was hoping you. you, you <laughs> I don't think it's Claire. Uh, Claire would show like a lot more eucalypt herbaceousness. Uh, I think if it was, it could be, could easily be Barossa, but there's something, there's something about McLaren Vale Red. I think that makes me think it's McLaren Vale. And whether that's me playing the player. I was going to say, I, I, watched, I, I, I watched a little bit last night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> could be me playing the player. Um, Shorty Lau, thank you very much. And and that's sort of like what's throwing me at the moment. Yeah. Okay. But I think there's, there's a prettiness to McLaren Vale Reds and there's like a, um, uh, it's going to sound terrible for those playing at home, uh, like a blood-like thing about the ironstone in, in McLaren Vale Reds that you, it's it, it feels, you know, when you cut yourself as a kid, you kind of lick yeah, it. And you're yeah. like, yeah, it's got that sort of thing that makes me think it's like McLaren Vale's classic for that. So I'm going to say it's the Vale. It's the Vale. Cool. Um, let's go. Barbera Carignan Grenache. It's not Carignan. If that's Carignan, if, and it's not Barbera because the acidity is too low, it's totally Grenache. Yeah, it's Grenache. Yeah, <laughs> but I like I like the fact I, I like really good oh. trying to like like that throw good. it. I liked it. It was yeah. just like yeah. that's but it's totally Grenache. It's so pretty yeah. and it's so it, like that's it's just it's McLaren Vale Grenache. The, the thing is like where in in the Vale and I, I won't get you to go to sub regions, but I'll, I'll be yeah. Like it feels it feels sandy. It feels really really sandy. Yeah. Um, so are we, what's the vintage? I'm gonna go. That's gonna be tough. 1917. It's not 19. Mm. Oh, it's just so nice on the nose, isn't it? It's just... <laughs> this is delicious. So it is very it's delicious. delicious. Absolutely delicious. What, 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 what would make it not 19? Uh, 19 is so fresh. Right. 19 is so fresh. Like it would be, it's like, it's. this has seen a little bit of elevage, so it's actually seen a little bit of barrel age because mm -hmm. it's so soft. So sort of petered out. If it's 19, I'd be surprised because it means like a, it it, lo it would look a little bit advanced as, mm -hmm. as to what it would be. Um, and I'm just thinking through sort of vintages in terms of like actual like um, quality, like weather patterns, because that, that's one of the cool things about wine. Obviously, you yeah. get one hand year to make it. Yeah. And so we're heavily influenced by weather patterns. Typically, like cooler weather is going to mean underripe flavors. We're going to have like you know peak your acidity, natural acidities. Mm -hmm. Uh, a little bit of greenness, um, which I don't get on this. And typically, I think the 17 was the last cooler-ish vintage that we actually had. So I'm going to go 18. It's 19. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, right. Super do fresh. Wanna, do you want to have a stab at producer? 19 Grenache. I like this in, in terms in terms of the veil. I've like literally a thousand producers. <laughs> I'll, but no, I'll, no. I'll give you three. Okay. Are we going inkwell? 
Are we going a coat of barrels or are we going chalk hill? I, and this is like playing the player thing with Chalk Hill because obviously you're set up at Chalk Hill and it's an amazing example. Um, and you know what? Your choice of a coat of barrels is so incredible. Do you know why? Why? Because the fruit comes from Chalk Hill. <laughs> <laughs> for Gazzy, for Gazzy, I'm going to say it's a coat of barrels. It's a, it's a coat of barrels. No, it's Chalk Hill. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well done. This is good. Oh, this is absolutely... Oh, shit, yeah. man. Like so... the, the ball. This has... Sean Lau, if you are chiming in right now, I want to know this ten. I, I think this has this has some big label energy about it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna it does legitimately. So yes, it, it's going on the wall. Big label energy. Um, do you know about big label energy? Uh, yeah, I've, I've 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 dabbled in it a little bit. But dabbled in it. It's like like if if bartenders get together and they you know just. It's sort of, I'm not sure it's how like it works. It's like old chartreuse? Is it sort of like... Yeah, like, here's my vintage chartreuse. <laughs> I, was in, I was in Hong Kong and someone was like, check out my vintage Aperol. And it's like, is vintage Aperol a thing now? Oh, is that, so. we've it's really... Any, vintage bottles of, of mm. any sort of Amaro or Amaro-esque yeah. things are a bit of a thing. Yeah, well, it's basically like that, pretty much. Um, wow, mate, thank you so much for, right, for opening that. That's, um, that's, that's cracking. It's, it's a pleasure to share it. This, this is the thing, like that, that wine is so particular and so precise about its region. It was so, like, that was pretty... Important. I was going to throw it in just as a, did you think that I would bring something that was yeah, I could pretty much get? The double get. bluff. <laughs> the, the double, double bluff. bluff. Yeah. The double bluff. I was yeah. hoping for the double Absolutely. bluff. Absolutely, but um, no, no, thank you. Um, and it's, it's sort of like, it's, it is... That's one of the really cool things about really great producers of, yeah. of just wine in general. You can you can literally narrow it down step by step. They're not trying to make Barossa Valley anything in McLaren Vale. These yeah. guys know what they're doing. It, being being a part of um, of Chalk Hill, being introduced to the way that they make wine, being introduced to the, the people behind the brand. You know, it's it's such a, an amazing kind of journey, and it's, mm. it's very special. It's very very special. I. I, having moved from regional Queensland and not really existing around producers and farmers, you know, in the in the, the years following after I was a bartender then an ambassador, to mm. then return and start working alongside people that are growing crops that are that are that are you know really connected to the like, to the land legitimately is farmers. legitimately farmers. Yeah, uh, it's just a different type of hospitality. It's very special. So, which would you rather be, a som or a bartender? Bartender. Some. Uh, <laughs> actually, no, I would I was like... I always I'd, a terrible bartender, so I would, I'd, I'd, I'd preface that by going, I would, I'd much prefer to be a good bartender. I'd love to I'd love to be a bartender. Clean just so, bartender. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. I'd, I'd, only because, firstly, I don't know how to, to make drinks. Uh, I'm just, I'm the world's shittest bartender. I don't have a gin brand. Yeah, go figure. Does, yeah. <laughs> I want to know one thing. And yeah. I've always, I wanted to know, because my wife hates it when we go out anywhere and I order a Negroni and immediately I'm picking it apart and going, Oh well, you know, I could probably do this better, I could this do this totally bit, happens. could yes. do this better. And I've ruined Negronis for her ever outside of our house because she just doesn't want to go through the, the problem of, of me picking it apart. She loves yeah. Negronis. Yeah. Is it like you with wine? Can yeah, you go totally. anywhere with, can you, like, I've always w I would be terrified to be a som because I could not just enjoy a bottle of wine for what it is. Um, yeah, so why we have beer. Beer's, beer's, <laughs> beer is Switzerland. <laughs> Uh, no, so, uh, at, well, my wife's uh, uh, unfortunately celiac, so she can't have beer. Right. Uh, and so, wine is that sort of, wine is our Switzerland. But, um, no, I so, so like, if you had a really, if you had a shit in a grain, if you're just kind of thrown together, right, mm -hmm. really sloppy, mm -hmm. do you have the capability to just go, to fuck in a grain and just drink it? Yes. Yeah, to totally. Well, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Like, yeah, we'll pick apart something, but then we go, yeah, but it's, we did order a wine at a bar in the middle of a piazza mm -hmm. and it's been served in a tumbler. Um, That's the best type of Negroni. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go, there you go. And so yeah, I, I think it does. It does. Look, we do. It's sort of like once you start to become a lot more attuned to flavour, I think as well. And especially, I'm not sure how it's like in, in sort of the spirits realm, because um, obviously wine and food. You know, once we, you know, it's it's actually the food thing's the problem, not the wine. We'll drink any wine. Screw it. You ordered something. Hey, you're in for it. If you don't like it, if it's faulty or whatever, like you drink it. Um, it's, but, you know, God be damned if someone serves you up like, you know, something like, you know, spaghetti bolognese, it looks like soup. You know, like we become, <laughs> we become, you know, so much more judgmental on flavors outside of, of the shit that we're actually, yeah. like, we're aware of. Um, and that's, I don't know, it's a funny sort of picking apart thing, but, uh, I mean, good fucking question. <laughs> good fucking question. Um, no, so I've purposely put a whole bunch of glasses out here because 
Like, are these are these designed to be? I want to, I want to talk about Never Never for a while. Sure. Um, because well, like like this is it's a pretty amazing lineup where you've come from. Yeah. Uh, to to sort of like where you are now because it started with Triple Jennifer. Like started with that bad boy, but. How would, how did all of this sort of progress and the dark series stuff sure. and a new thing here that thing <laughs> now what's going on here because this <laughs> fascinates the shit out of me um, well do you want to start here or do you want to go straight to that what are you you take take me for a journey Sean right well when it came to the triple tell, me, tell gym, me a story what we wanted to do was create a style of gin that was super concentrated really rich in those really classic characters that you'd associate with a London dry style the basis of all kind of that style of gin is juniper, coriander seed, angelica root, licorice. So we pump it full of that. Yep. We do a single shot style and a small still. So everything is about pumping up the mouthfeel and pumping up just the unctuousness of the flavor. When we made that, we immediately wanted to make something that was a little bit stronger because at 52%, you're gonna get such a heavier hit of that character. And when you're turning into cocktails, when you're turning into martinis, it's gonna be right there. The Southern strength for us started off as the dark series, as I was talking, um, and it was promoted once we realized that we had landed on the recipe. That's kind of what the dark series is, is our place yeah. where we can kind of still monetize our experiments. And then, yeah, and then it's like, <laughs> When we've got it, it becomes, yeah. it gets the, the parent label. That's it. Like with yeah. the, the very first batch of, of Southern Strength we made, we made 90 bottles. I reckon Marcus Modern at Haynes & Co. bought pretty much all of them. Um, and we started experimenting with the, with, with the style. These two are exactly the same ingredients, but we changed the ratios and it totally changes the texture. Yeah. So we amplify the lemon, we amplify the angelica root. It turns it into this really, really savory gin. And it turns- and You picked up some awesome accolades as well. Yeah, like that's, that, that, that turned us from, you know, a, a, a a, a small distillery with, with four employees to a small distillery with five employees overnight. So with a bigger, bigger wage percentage. Yeah, that's, that's so <laughs> when we, we won world's best classic gin in 2018, uh, sorry, 2019 with, uh, with that gin. Um, two years after you started. Two years after we started. Yeah. We, beat oh, Tank, we beat Tank Ray 10, who I used to work for. <laughs> That's, is which it, is a very cool thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, is that bittersweet or is it like. It a... was weird though, because Tim, because I was like, because Tank Ray 10's won every award in the, un, 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 under the, the sun. sun, and we were going up against it, and I was like, we're not going to beat Tank Ray 10. It is, it is a pretty uh, amazing gin. Yeah, spectacular amazing. representation of it. And Tim said, we're going to beat him. And I said, no, we're not, I'll bet you. And he goes, what do you want? And I said, I'll get a tattoo of your face on my body. And he was like, we're gonna win and I'm not gonna let you do that to your wife. And I was like, okay, you call it. He goes, he's, you gotta, he's a you good gotta, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get a shirt with my face on it and wear it all the way around, uh, around uh, 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 the bar week in Sydney. Um, which is a good reduction in bet, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so I did, I did wear it. And I wore it, I wore it for as long as I, as long as it was clean, which only lasted one night. Uh, uh, and so that that set us off on a journey, which was incredible. Um, and those two jeans, uh, I, I, I feel, were the perfect sort of expression of who we are and what we wanted to do. The freak came along um, because. <laughs> because we wanted to do something that was just outrageous. In whiskey, I've always loved Optimal, um, the peatiest, biggest whiskey in the, in, in, the, in the Isla category. Of course. Just because it bookends it, you know? Just because yeah. it's like when people go in and went, I want this, I want the biggest, smokiest thing you can give me, what is it? And you get this crazy dark yeah. bottle. Yeah, I it's wanted a brew, that. Brew yeah, brew exactly. Optimal. And yeah. I wanted, we wanted that kind of thing in gin. We wanted this, this real representation of, oiliness like we on the Looking back of it says we're not here to fuck spiders and that that kind of for me it when, does <laughs> i can confirm it says that yes <laughs> when, yeah it very when, much does when bartenders discover that it's it's a pretty good indication of what's to come and um it's it yeah, every time I open a bottle of it, and, it, but it's got it, a vintage it, day. it attracts birds. That's actually last year's vintage. <laughs> it I found. It attracts birds. I, I, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of pine. That's actually last year's vintage. I actually pulled that off my uh, my shelf on the way in here. So we've we've just released a 2019 vintage. So it's incredible to sort of see the difference between both of them. This one's mellowed in the bottle. Um, a lot of the flavors that come off from the the vapor basket, which we use to create a lot of um, top notes in the gin, um, they actually over the year mellow and and they sort of shift in the bottle. And what you're left with is a much earthier representation of the Juniper Freak. If you buy this year's Juniper Freak, it is bright, it is eucalyptic, it is just this incredible freshness on the nose. Mm. It's mm. a belting gin and tonic if you love that classic, classic sort of London dry style. Of course, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, then, yeah, like all of the other interesting products we brought along was, was, was on that journey was about things that I love and um, things that we love drinking. Like South Australians love pimps. They love 
they're like drinking pims at the back of the Adelaide Oval. That is, do you know? Yeah, fair call. Fa there's a fact, and I, I learnt this through one of my Diageo buddies. He probably should remain nameless for this, but um, he said that pim sales across the entire state of South Australia reduce by a quarter if the cricket goes for three days instead of four days. Wow. <laughs> by quarter, so what are they doing so, on their fourth day? <laughs> so, so they are, like, in terms of how much PIMS is consumed at the back of the Adelaide Oval, they are absolutely rinsing it at that time. That's how much is, is like, if it's a two day test match, it's a disaster yeah. for, for, for the way yeah, that they really? sell food. So when it, comes to, when it comes to South Australians, and in particular the way they celebrate a fruit cup, the world's most famous fruit cup is PIMS. Mm -hmm. We wanted to do something, I guess that was synonymous with that. Um, you didn't give it a number? Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, this is our fancy fruit cup. Um, I, I, I didn't want to didn't want to pull too much from too. the from the from the Pims category. Uh, I don't think we're going to really expand too much into the changing the base spirit, which is why yep. Pims have those different course, numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What we might experiment with is with the marionette guys is actually changing the liqueur base. This is actually an orange liqueur base, which okay. is why we call it a fancy. Back yep. in the day when you added orange liqueur to a cocktail, you'd turn it into a fancy sour or okay. a yeah, fancy cool. spritz. I didn't know that. Um, so cool. this is our fancy fruit cup because we've added the addition of orange orange, orange liqueur. Yeah. And it's summertime, like again, I love it. It's it's fun, it's my mum going. didn't really drink a lot of gin. She drank a case of fruit cup at Christmas, and uh, it's you know it's. Is that like hiding vegetables to your kids? Is that like a? It's, she she drinks gin now, but before her son started a distillery, she kind of didn't. Uh, <laughs> so she's learnt to love it. Uh, but this this particular product, she's always laughed because again, it's the synonymous of that of that kind of celebration of summer, and we wanted totally. our own piece of it. Totally. The Dark Series was always a place where we wanted to play um, and they're not really designed as products that are going to race off the shelf and everybody's they're kind niche. of super, super niche. niche. Like, yeah. they, they're, up, they're a chance for us to play with friends of ours in the industry who just nail what they do. Like mm. making an Aquavit and, and, and you know making an Amaro, they're, they're very particular to a certain type of drinker, especially an Alpine Amaro which is what the, the Black Juniper Amaro is. Um, both of these products were, 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 were opportunities for us to not only work with people that know more flavour, mm. you know, in those particular categories than we do. That was yeah. the, that was a cool thing. Like we had never made an Aquavit before. Totally. And the guys at PS40 were off on Aquavit, so it was like, yeah, like why not? Let's what? give it a crack. Like, Let's do it. Yeah. We had never made an Amaro before, and, and the guys at Black Pearl live on this. So, like, that's why you collaborate. You don't collaborate for the purposes of of just sort of monetizing it. You collaborate it to grow mm. and to and to learn more about about sure. you know, those products sure. so these two are like this is where i love maybe because it's the bartender me a little bit but i love the um uh, the amaro we make this by roasting juniper i think it's we can't yet find another example of it globally in the amaro category where you roast juniper like coffee uh creates a, a rich sort of um you know caramelized flavor which we use as the base um to create that bitterness and it's just a really unique sort of product Totally. Um, and has won its own awards as well, which is crazy in a category which is uh, not really consumed that, that often, I guess, in the Australian... No, and, you know. and really, really, really hard to make, like, uh, if you... Oh my God, it's hard to make. <laughs> yeah, well, if you talk to bartenders about ochre, like, there's like 50% of them utterly hate us, primarily because there was once upon a time we made one that just, it just started fermenting. They just, oh, right. like, yeah, yeah, it was like, like I think we, 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 we did like ochre and red ochre, and it was like a lower ABV and a higher ABV. And of course, everyone looked at the cost of the lower ABV and was like, hey, we can make really cheap Negronis. And we're like, mm, kind of not what we intended, but that's cool. Uh, and um, next minute, um, the 11% alcohol yeah. thing started to just ferment. Yeah. Um, and eventually just kind of push the tea top out and then spurt sticky shit Ooh, yeah. all over people's back bars. And that's when I realized that bartenders really care about how sticky yeah. their bottles are Sticky's on their back bad. <laughs> 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 it's like it's like a thing, uh, but uh, yeah, no. It's really like we have we have done so many iterations of ochre. It's just not funny. Like it's it's, it's so there's no rule book. I always they tell don't people tell you how to do it. It's I, I always tell people making a bottle of, of gin is like making a martini. Especially mm -hmm. bartenders will get this reference. Making a bottle of gin is like making a martini. Making a bottle of amaro is like making a hundred zombies. It's just like <laughs> it, it's, it, it's it is. You can't really pre-batch it either. There's so many, so many movements and so much going in. And I, in this one alone, I, I shudder. I don't want to talk about it too much because you know, you'll just go, "That's expensive." <laughs> like yeah. there's there's steeped ingredients in here that are not yeah. only steeped yeah. in 
uh, sous vide and sugar. They're also steeped in a sous vide of alcohol and then combined to create greater mouthfeel. Like there's yeah, it's so yeah, much. It's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Much there's movement. barrel aged segments. There's there's distilled segments and it's, there's. It's not timing this. differences. Oh, it's just but a, it's delicious. It's a nightmare. And the whole thing is that we we put it with Coke, and it's delicious. It's called a Black Adder. You get it on the menu. With that. <laughs> like we we went all through. It's absolutely <laughs> outrageous. Like Fernet, basically Fernet yeah. and Coke. Yeah, yeah basically. We, yeah. Like, it's like we an want, Aussie Aussie yeah, equivalent. We, can, what, we want yeah. that. Totally. You know, I, want, I want bartenders <laughs> to drink an Australian version because stuff it. Let's do that. <laughs> and, and so we've got a new one here. This is, this is the one that is, has, has given us a lot of excitement. I, there was a reason I brought some Chalk Hill Grenache with me, um, and it's because it, it forms the base, if you like, of, of this incredible, incredible um, collaboration that we've done with them. So this is um, the world's first Ginash. Do you like that? Bartenders love a pun. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't love I a pun? A, as, a, as a wine person, I kind of looked and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> It's fun. But as a, as a bartender, yeah, absolutely, for sure. It's for me. It was all about when we when we all sat down um, and, and we said, what, "What do we really want to create?" It's beautiful. We wanted it to beautiful. It's just luminous. It is it's, legitimately it's, yeah. luminous. That is a really great way to put it. It, it. For us, it was there was a a couple of a couple of sort of agendas when we were putting this together. We wanted something that was fun. Mm -hmm. If we wanted something that was that was going to, I, I guess, pique the interest of people, where you know. Juniper Freak requires a certain level of intense love of, of, of gin character yeah, to yeah. want to drink a 58% Juniper yeah. Forward style. We wanted something that was really, really fresh, that had the vibrancy, still had the flexibility that you could put in a lot of different drinks, still had the ABV so that it would carry through in a lot of different ways. Um, you could still be utilizing the Gronies and Collins, makes a wicked sour. Um, Can uh, I try it? Absolutely. Can I try it? I want to crack it. I want to crack it. Because is it from the same or like what vineyard is it from? So this is actually a single estate jash. It's <laughs> from. I'm gonna keep saying it. <laughs> so good. So good. Uh, it's 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 actually from uh, the uh, the Slate Creek Vineyard, which is um, the Harvey's home that? vineyard. Yeah, that? absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so this is actually from John and Di's. Oh, John Harvey's. Yeah. So it's yeah, actually sweet. from their front yard, pretty much. Um, so yeah, they're, they're home property. Did they give you permission to get the Grenache? No, it? we just snuck in really late. <laughs> no, of course we did. Um, so it was it was a, a really amazing sort of opportunity to to connect to the people that we, we, we share the property with, that we you know oh, that, man, we, that we're, we're great fun. friends with. So um, you still get the the Grenache on the nose. You still get this that wonderful sort of raspberry esque you know citrus note. But because we use cinnamon and pepperberry in our gin, you get this this lovely connection to the spiciness of it as well. So it's, you know, if you were to look at a, if you're gonna make a gin style and, and, and include, you know, that wine varietal, uh, that grape varietal, I should say, it's it's amazing. Um, you actually managed purpose. to capture it. You've actually yeah. managed to capture it. So is it, is it Grenache as in fr like fresh grapes or? Fresh grapes. So basically, yeah, wow. we basically harvest. Um, and that's the big thing. Like, there's a few you examples like the, of different. The residual sugar on it. Yeah, well. there's, there's a few different products where you'll take wine, finished wine, and take gin and put them together. And that that's a that's a very that's a much harder process. I feel because you've got to balance all of this acidity. You've got to you've yeah. got to, you're working with something that's already a product. Yeah. And then putting it into a product is is again its own challenge. Totally. totally. So when it comes to what this is, we took um, uh, triple juniper gin off at a, at a high ABV. Yeah. We. On the same day, we crushed and destemmed, um, destemmed and crushed the grapes. Um, we then put it on, um, on onto steep. We left it on steep for about a month. Um, we then separated all the solids. We uh, effectively used this, the, the, the the juice as the dilution element, complete dilution element of. So basically, the what ABV you get at the end of it is like what you get. So what it came off the still, it went straight into the into the into, into, into the, the steep. Fruit. Um, and then we, we, we did some, some very minor adjustments. It came off at about 42. We found it to be slightly hot um, in terms of at 42%. So yep. by bringing it down a little bit again with more of that, with that yep. we brought it down to something that had a little bit more of that, uh, that Grenache presence. That's dangerous. It's so, you're getting, so. I can <laughs> literally just so straight over ice. We're all, even like a bramble, <laughs> that would be the most, most hardcore is, bramble yeah. fucking ever, right? Bramble. Stuart Morrow, our um, bar manager, will love that comment because the very first thing that, Ch that Chewy said when he tried it was. It's like that's bramble on drugs. Like a reverse bramble. So yeah, doing yeah, totally. A, so doing a, 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 the gin over the top as opposed to the, 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 um, the liqueur at the top. So, bramble. yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Quite a quite a, a fun drink, and like we talk about um, when we were first doing all of the tasting trials, i.e., 
Tim, George and I just drinking it aggressively in, in, in ISO. Um, we were kind of working through the various classics that we could use it with. Um, the term on Monday morning when we came back from, uh, from maybe four or five or half a dozen uh, Janash cocktails was getting Janashed because it was just too easy to drink. It was too... <laughs> Before we realised it, we're like, oh, this is not a bottle of wine. Okay. It's, <laughs> yeah, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's, it's three in one. Much really. like a good Grenache, the alcohol sneaks up. Yeah, the alcohol is really hidden in this. In fact, um, the sweetness does such it's a lovely. great job. So all the, all the, all the sweetness. It, does, it still is, feels like gin. Yeah, like it's, it's. It doesn't feel like a liqueur. It feels like gin. The beautiful back palate is um, is all that spice. So pepperberry, you're very familiar with. Yeah. Um, you know, has that wonderful sort of oh, spicy yeah, character right, towards yeah, the back, and it just links up perfectly with the with the red fruit character of the of the Grenache. It's you know, I, I, I enjoy this like a lot. Great. Like, I enjoy it a lot more than any other uh, wine grape based gin thing awesome. that we make in this country. And it's, and it's a real challenge too because we this didn't want to really we didn't really want to offend yummy. anyone when we first started off. <laughs> We really didn't, we, we, we're brand new McLaren Vale. The last thing we wanted to do was wow. just go, hey, we're gonna take this incredibly special, really unique varietal that is currently crushing it across the across mm. the world. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take the very small allocation that you guys have got, we're gonna whack some gin in it, you know? Like it was sort of, <laughs> you know, if it was bad, we'd be in all, but it's not. It is, it's, it's not, it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's really, it's, 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 it's really such an amazing, uh, amazing expression of gin as well as Grenache. Thank like, you. Like, Grenache is probably the most accurate thing you could probably call this thing. When I first wrote that on the board, everyone hated it. And I was like, no, we're not gonna do it. We're not gonna call it Grenache. And then slowly, and over time, I just kept on saying it, and they were like, God damn it, it's Grenache. It's not anything other than that. It's both of them uniquely oh, combined. Far out. It's so, like, so accurate. Like, and that's the other thing, like, a lot of people would have tried fermented Grenache, and there's, like, a flavor of that. I've uh, worked for, uh, worked in McLaren about for three years, and um, it smells like fresh Grenache. Yeah. Like legitimately, there's there's sort of like something about sort of the, the flavor that's in the air of fresh Grenache that's really quite distinct and different from every other grape variety that you actually get down there. And you've actually captured that. That's just like, I don't even know how you do this. Like I've got a distillery, I don't know how you do this. It's, that is so cool. It's a lot of fun and it's a lot to do with the, it's all about speed. Like we would have made, everyone's like, why did you only make 2,500 bottles? Like we made none of it. Like it's so little. And um, it's because we just- Because you're idiots, you should have made more. Well, <laughs> just we, were, we were restricted by like- How much Grenache you can get. How much Grenache you can it's get. It's expensive. It's man. expensive, we Fruit's didn't know expensive. what we were, But it was also a lot to do with like, because we do it the way we do it, because we're not just blending wine and gin, you're limited by vats, you're limited by yeah. what you can put it in, yeah. and we just didn't have the room. Like we just simply, simply just didn't have the opportunity to, totally. to really make any more. Which, totally. you know, we're glad of how, how, how popular it's been. Um, we think that it's got legs, so we're gonna make is it available on the website at the moment? It is. You can jump online. It went live. Uh, Pre-sales on on the website went live today. It was um, it went, went live with our subscribers last week. So if you want some, I would jump on. It so will got, go. We've got about approximately fifty people on watching at the moment, and yeah, like I'll, I'll vouch for it. Seriously, it's something that you actually fun. it's something you actually want. You've yeah. had especially for winter. Like this is mm. insane. Like this is insane. You you could act. Yeah, yeah. You know, I would actually leave it in the freezer. I would just leave it super, super like, oh, thick, super viscous. Yeah, Gotta yeah. Eat it with a spoon. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> like, like it's it's like jelly shots, but you know for adults. Um, and it, <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got literally seven minutes. I'll um, leave this with you. This but, is But um, thank you. Um, but we're not going to let you out of here without having a crack at blind tasting it yourself. So uh, on the back wall here are a whole bunch of wines. I don't even know what they are. Right. Uh, you definitely don't know. No. Um, you're welcome to choose one, and uh, at, at random, whatever, whatever you All choose. Right. Uh, no one's gonna grab, and we're going to. to so what's that? Is that just a? That's just like a. You know, that was the one I should have been drinking at the start. No, that's what you're sitting oh, on. Oh yes. On. Oh, so <laughs> I'm gonna drink that now. <laughs> mm. um, oh, so, so good. All right. Uh, any of those? Have a crack. Have a crack. Let's go straight. And I've a ton of questions. Ton of questions here. So yeah. while uh, no one's getting prepped for that, Sean, what have you learned the most from your dark series collaborations? I think when it came to when it comes to what you discover through um, working with people who are who are better than you at flavor, and that was that was always kind of what we wanted to do with Dark Series, like work with people that make you better, and that mm. was I think the the, the the always the lesson that we wanted to make sure that we had on the whiteboard when we went to, and did a new collaboration with a Dark Series. What are we learning? What are we what are we building, um, you know, what are we growing from in, in this yeah. process? And I think with every single one that we've done, 
you know, we've learned something new. Like Tim's, like our distiller is incredible when never made it, never made an aquavit before, literally was reading up on it um, and found an absolute love for the category, you know? And, and again, it's, it's, it's those discoveries that we make when we're working with our friends that, um, you know, makes it such a cool process. It's, um, it's funny, like Aquavit really sort of breaks the bounds of gin. It's like gin without gin. You can pull that out if you want. Oh, yeah. Or you can cool. drink it, whatever. I mean, up to you. Oh, um, I'm going to shove the, the, the comments down, or have you... Keep having a look. Keep having um, Terry, though. Terry has chimed in one of the most amazing comments of the night. I'm going to have to get some Janash. Uh, funnily, if you separate the words, it spells out what you have if you have too much gin ache. I know. I, I, uh, we, 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 <laughs> we discovered that very quickly. <laughs> so, if, anyone, if anyone doesn't get the joke, it's just like, why do they call it gin ache? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't really pick up on that, but uh, Terry's much smarter than I was. <laughs> uh, he's picked up on it. Um, over vanilla bean ice cream. Oh, yeah. 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 Good, good vanilla yeah. bean gelato. You know, when, when you get one of those um, uh, strawberry sort of thingos at Macca's, you know, like that, because you never do, like, you have yeah. hot fudge sundaes, but the strawberry one? Yeah. Yeah, that would, that would be way better. It's definitely got that strawberry cooling oh. kind of... Um, Oh, this could be really expensive. I don't know what these are. Like, oh um, yeah, alcoholic boysenberries, like a like a fluffy. Uh, flurry, it's not a fluffy. Fluffy is a different thing. <laughs> is that a fluffy? Is it a furry? Is it a fluffy? flurry? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> you're telling the story. Uh, no, Christina Griffiths is just chimed in saying, "Sean, about to order the Stockholm syndrome. How should I drink it?" I love it. That's the Aquavit, right? That's the Aquavit, the Stockholm syndrome. Um, uh, I really, really love it with, and it's obviously very niche because we work with PS40, but PS40 is bush tonic. You can get in uh, a lot of brilliant independent retailers. Yep. Bel Air sells it. Uh, lots Christina, of... you're based in Sydney, I think, as well. So you should actually yeah. be able to, better, I mean, Much can you easier knock than on the here. door? You can knock on the door. Definitely call them up. Yeah. Like they're, they're at the moment, they're doing um, uh, cocktail deliveries. So I would just call them up and ask for a six pack of their bush tonic. Try it with um, uh, a little slice of something savory. We like it with uh, Thai basil just lifts a different botanical out of the nose, and it is gorgeous. You have to kind of like a little bit of that fennel character, a little bit of licorice note. Aquavit's known for it, so again, it is a, a part, of the, part of the product. Love PS40, she's trying in. Love PS40. So good, the guys there are flavor yeah, wizards. wizards. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Seriously, they're, they're insane. They're insane. They and, and in fact, they, the entire sort of like just the bar is one of the most wackest yeah. um, uh, like fit outs as well. Yep, Noah, he's double checking. You're like so, he's thorough. He's thorough. Everyone making sure. Yep. Yeah. All right, so. Okay. Um, this is going to yeah. be fun. Yeah, Options are a, good. I was good a, at multiple choice at school. <laughs> I'm just going to go C, 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 C. We'll see how we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. um, all right, so. What are, what are you picking up on the nose? What are you What are you feeling? And this is probably the actual like rather than kind of trying to figure out descriptors, fuck descriptors. Yeah. You don't actually need like no one's actually impressed when you're like, oh, I've got blackberry, boysenberry, and I've got you know, pesto and shit like that. Yeah, but yeah. What, what do you feel? It, it to me it feels like uh, that sort of sweet smell of like riesling that I usually sort of if I'm finding something like if you, like when you're throwing it pears that have been in the bin too long you know that kind of like really wow. sweet you yeah, know that really pears. yeah, yeah that yeah. really busted up skin you know that lunchbox you, you, you didn't eat your, you didn't eat your pear and you left it in the lunchbox and it's just like a mushy pile and your mum's like what's yeah. this you know, that, that only actually happens in queensland because <laughs> in, true. in south australia they just last weeks because weeks it's and weeks. because it's, it's so a sous vide and a school bag so. <laughs> yeah, exactly it reminds I, me of that taste it though there's something amazing about the mouthful of this a bit of a tell a bit of a tell Yeah, so probably not that. Bit of a prick. Yeah. Bit of a bit of a bit bubble. Of, bit of a bubble. Bit of a bubble. So it's uh frizzante. Frizzante. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, Noah, you're playing the game. Uh, what well I mean your your dungeon master. Red or white, isn't it? Yeah, it'd be a red or white. White. I, mean, sure. I reckon it's definitely a white wine. It is a white wine. It is a white wine. Is, white. It, is white. it from the, the new world or the old world? Ooh. That's actually fa that's that's the tough one because yeah. I think this could be cool. I'm thinking I'm actually thinking this is like really dope old world. That's what I'm I'm vibing on right, right now. I think but, it's really funky new world. 
All right, let's do it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it's good. It, it's all right. Ah, well there you go. Yeah, 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 honestly, you're going down the right path, you're yeah. Yeah. Down the right path yeah. though. Like you're actually on it because like, I'm, I'm. That was a stab. I was yeah. actually on you, world. Yeah. In my head, it, like, I was it, like, it, my mouth was on all the. Picking either answer would take you in another um, direction. Yeah. So, yeah. Totally. Like yeah. this is this cool. is a, yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah. Um, are we going Austria, Switzerland, France? Oh. Really? All right. Austria, Switzerland. Which country is doing better with COVID? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all doing better than Italy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, that's not part of the, uh, the equation. So Here's my brain, I'm the gambling. Okay. Just a... Can't be Switzerland, that would be Chasselas. And I've never seen a, a Swiss Chasselas have like bubbles in it. They just, that would be whack. It would be cool. It would be cool, super niche, but really whack. Um, Surely it's France, it's French or Italian. I just that... the Austrians would do this. Oh, was Austrian was the other. What was it? Oh, Aust yeah. Austrians, uh, Switzerland, Switzerland or, or France. France. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Right. I'm not sure if um, I just don't think I've ever seen Austrians like there's, there's in Bergenland. There's like three producers that might do this, and I mean a big might. Um, in France though, there's a ton. But this is clean. This is crisp. I feel this is intentional as well. Are you gonna go to Austria? I'm gonna go. Are oh, you gonna go to Austria? Oh. Where are you? <laughs> that's, I, that's just like gamble. Like yeah, I reckon that, so it is total gamble. Yeah. I think. Well, go I'm, France. I'm gonna go. The best. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go strategy and yeah. clearly go, go. It's a sparkling white wine. In yeah. my brain, I would go. Well, clearly, it must be French. It's French. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Logic. You know, it's just sound logic. Now. Just stabbing in the dark on that one. Now, now we get another one. Um, yeah, okay. Alsace. Uh, yeah. Champagne. Yeah. Burgundy. Oh, I'm gonna go with Burgundy. Burgundy. Ooh. Burgundy. Well, it's definitely Chardonnay. Whatever it is, it's Chardonnay. Oh. There's more of that down there, isn't it? Is it? Is there more? Of that I don't down think there? it's Chardonnay. I actually, don't think it's Chardonnay. So it can't be Champagne, and it can't be it can't be Burgundy. It has to be Alsace. Oh. So you're going outside? I'm going outside. I'm going to go for Burgundy. Burgundy. It's Burgundy. <gasps> <laughs> Killing me! What? Killing me! <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Wow, that's really amazing. Then it's. it's oh. But is it Chardonnay? No, it's not. It's fucking Aligote. That's what it is. Of course. Of course it is. Of course it is. Those course are the two options. Those are the two are we options. Having Chardonnay or Aligote? Do you, want to, do, you want to, do you want to do it again? I'll, do I'll go Chardonnay. Aligote, you go, go Chardonnay, Chardonnay because it's just like, this is... If, you're if I picked a Chardonnay off the back, that's awesome. I'm going to go with Chardonnay. Guess what, man? You really love Chardonnay. Is it Chardonnay? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. Right on! Yeah, that was great. Right, 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 right. He really does... Wow. wow. Just, 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 yeah, 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 that's yeah, it. Good, good. <laughs> um, I'm gonna skip. Here's you going like I'm not like a wine mind well, or anything yeah, like no, that. Yeah, it's just that's, that's I just amazing. like to gamble, you know? Like, <laughs> just play dice. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a, a uh, stab? It, yeah. Like, okay, yeah. I'm, I, I, at this I point, at this point, I'm guessing this is a re-fermented, like unintentionally spritzy wine. Because it's just, it's just too whack to come from like wacky. And it could be like a weird Cremont thing, because there is Cremont de Begonia, and I just don't think like, like that's Cremont though. That's not that. That's not this. This is a, hey. What's really surprising that if it is a refer, this is the thing that fucks me right now, because it's a refermented wine. It is definitely bubbly, no doubt about that. That is spritzy. But it's clean and crisp and delicious and fun. It is so like you would you would consume lots of this aggressively. Um, In the sun. In the sun, mm -hmm. absolutely. So that's Lots the thing that, like, wine. typically, if there's a wine that's refermented, you would pick up on, you know, mousiness. You'd pick up on volatile acidity. You'd pick up on reduction. You'd pick up on this has none of it. It's just super clean. Mm -hmm. Penfolds could have made this. Seriously, how how like crisp and sort of specky this thing is. So I have no clue. I have no clue what this is. I have no past standard. Right. And if it's not Cremant de Begonia, I have no idea what it is. So no. Nah. I'm done. I'm tapping out. He's beat me. He beat me. I had a lot less uh, than that. Do you ever guess a vintage? 2017. 2017 as well. Yeah, it's 2017. <laughs> 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 I'm starting to agree with you for once. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> what is that? Wow. Oh, Coteau, Coteau de Dijon. Okay, okay. I still don't know what it is. <laughs> that is amazing. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah, well, totally. It is. It is uh, like it's. It's bottled as a dry as a, yeah. as a dry wine. That is. Um. That is one hundred and ten percent. Uh. We, well, we, we don't it, know. Uh, like, do we confirm box? that it was Chardonnay? It's hundred percent Chardonnay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Chardonnay. Look at that. Oh yeah. Well, she's she's bubbly. Like it's really bubbly. Like yeah, it's yeah. overtly sparkling, yeah. but clean. Like I'm not not. I'm 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 not disappointed oh, in this in, in in the bubble. Um. But it is most definitely. Uh, utterly amazing, um, mate. We are running over time, and I do I, I do realise that uh, we have Henry, our uh, lovely BA based in Melbourne, who's ready to click the go button. Sorry, Henry. Sorry, Henry. Um, but mate, thank you so much for, for coming on and and kicking my ass when it comes to blind tasting. <laughs> yes. C C C C all the time. That's yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, guys, thank you so much. Uh, we will catch you tomorrow, same time. We have a double header tomorrow, two amazing people, Sharon Romeo. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and Jill Gordon Smith uh, from Fall from Grace, and Fino, Vino, and Fino at Arp in Sepplesfield. So uh, tune in tomorrow night. We're going to have some real good fun looking at shit wine inventions. Uh, but uh, until that time, cheers. Have cheers, a great guys. night. Thank Sean, you. Thanks so much. Pleasure good to see you.